Hi, I'm Jacqueline Peng and this is the Evening Highlights. Consultancy firm Frost & Sullivan expects subsidy rationalisation in the power generation sector to continue next year. This as LNG prices are expected to remain low in line with depressed crude oil prices. I think if I got it right, it was more of subsidy reduction than tariff hike, right? However, Ravi says power tariff hike is unlikely to be affected by gas pricing. He says LNG is expected to trade between 7 to 8 US dollar per 1 million British thermal unit next year. I think for what we see is I think the gas prices are not necessarily going to increase next year just because the oil price is going to stay where they are in the same range. So we do not see that as a main reason for uh, tariff hike for the next year. Very, very unlikely I think that will be tariff hike hike will be a resultant of the gas price increase. Yesterday, the government announced lower rebates on power tariff to 1.52 cent per kilowatt hour, down from 2.25 cent currently. And this will result in households in the peninsula having to pay more for energy consumption. The lower rebates will be applicable to all consumers, except domestic consumers with monthly consumption of 300 kilowatt hour and below for the first half of 2016. A dozen of mega projects have been earmarked for Bumiputra companies and contracts from the projects are worth 36 billion ringgit. That's according to the Bumiputra Economic Empowerment Report Card 2015. The 12 projects include the MRT Line 1 and 2, KL118 Tower, the West Coast Expressway, Bukit Bintang City Centre, Asia Aerospace City and the Sungai Besi Ulu Klang Elevated Expressway. The contracts will be disbursed under a program helmed by Bumiputra Agenda Steering Unit or Taraju. Taraju also created a vendor development program which has generated 6.6 .6 billion ringgit in value. It aims to help entrepreneurs become competitive suppliers and manufacturers in the domestic and global markets. Bajaya Food Berhad's net profit plunged 96% to 6.2 million ringgit for its second quarter in 2016. That's down from 163 million ringgit last year. Revenue, however, surged almost 80% to 135 million ringgit. Thanks to the full effect of consolidating Bajaya Starbucks Coffee Company Sandrian Berhad or B Starbucks. Going forward, the group expects Starbucks Malaysia to maintain its revenue growth momentum. Bujaya Food also declared a second interim dividend of 1.25 cents single tier dividend per share. And it's to be paid out on January 22nd next year. Shares of Bujaya Food fell 1 cent to 2 ringgit 33 cent today, valuing it at almost 880 million ringgit. SP Satya is confident of achieving its sales target of 4 billion ringgit set for this year. That's because the property developer has a lot of projects in the pipeline. Plus, it's unbuilt sales of 9.5 billion ringgit, which will be recognised when the properties are built. We are confident we can achieve the 4 billion. Core's acting deputy president, Dato Wong Takwai, elaborates on the company's unbuilt sales. We still have 9.5 billion unbuilt sales. So our profitability, the contribution of all this revenue, it comes from this 9.5 billion, which is already sold, but in the pipeline. And we can only recognize this revenue as and when we build them. Meanwhile, Acting Chief Financial Officer Choi Kayu says revenue for the remaining current financial year will be from Malaysian projects. Substantially, uh, this year will be Malaysia. Uh, Overseas international maybe roughly about 30%. We are targeting maybe up to about 40-50% if we can achieve that. They were speaking to reporters after the signing ceremony involving a 1.07 billion ringgit syndicate financing facilities for SP Satya's associate company, Satya Federal Hills and Dream Berhad or SFH. It will be for a land swap development transaction under the government's public-private partnership program. Under the land swap, SFH will undertake the development of a new integrated health and research institute on a 41-acre land in Satya Alam, Shah Alam. In return, the government will provide a 52-acre site on Federal Hill for the development of a mixed residential commercial project worth 15 billion ringgit in GDV. The development is expected to be completed by October 2017. And that wraps up the evening highlights. I'm Jacqueline Peng. Thank you for watching.